I'm Brother Charles. Hey, we're going to do another part on this session of the of what we've been talking about, immortality, and what that means of heavy, heavenly Jerusalem coming down out of heaven and the marriage of the Lamb and how the marriage will be here on earth. And So now I'm going to talk to you about some other scriptures. Let's look at what else is going to happen, Brother Charles. I'm glad you asked me that. John 17, 15, Jesus prays here. Jesus is praying here. Powerful chapter. And it says in 17, well, let me give you 14. I've given them your word and the world has hated them because they are not of the world just as I am not of the world. Isn't that wonderful? See, now that's a good teaching in itself. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world. Jesus prayed that you don't, I don't, I pray that you take them not out of the world, but that they should keep them, you should keep them from the evil one. And it says, they are not of the world just as I am not of the world. Now, we, let me go to John 2, Gospel of John, chapter 2. I'll read you this, verse 17. It says, And the world is passing away, and the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides for, how is that? Abides forever. He that does the will of God abides forever. So God, there's a lot of promises like this in the New Covenant, but I'm just going to be lightweight on this right here because I want to go someplace with these teachings today. And I believe God answered Jesus' prayers. Do you believe that? He prayed that you take him not out of the world. See over there in Matthew 6, it says, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, right? So we need to begin with God. His is the kingdom and the power and the glory both now and forever. God is ushering his kingdom in upon this planet. The increase of his government will know no end. But we need to use all the scriptures and bring this to light. Romans 4. Let me read this to you. Romans chapter 4, I'll pick up about verse 13. <clears throat> we begin to see something here. And uh, and talking about Abraham, right? And we'll, we'll break this out. 4 13, it says, For the promise that he should be heir of the world. Heir of the world. This is to Abraham. Was not to Abraham or his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Now, if those who are of the law are heirs, faith is made void and the promise is made of none effect. So we're, we're, we're that seed of Abraham is in the earth today, see? And this is the, I talked about last week, I touched, you know, thy seed. He said, look up. He looked at the stars in heaven. He said, so shall thy seed be. And then he said, look down. And he said, so shall thy seed be. He saw the sand on the seashore. He said, so shall thy seed be. So now think about that. There's a heavenly seed and then there's an earthly seed. In John chapter 8, let me just throw a little bit of on this. Jesus said, I'm from above. You are from below. See, that's why it says in John 3 that you must be born again anew from above, from above. See, there, that's a powerful statement. I've, I've got a teaching on that. And so we need to realize that God has got a heavenly seed and an earthly seed. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of your confession, Christ Jesus. And I'm not going to rehearse what I taught last week. Lay in a little foundation. You can go on our website and pick up these teachings. This is a part four teaching. Romans 4 and 13, so we see that he is heir of the world. We know this that Matthew 5, 5 says, the meek, the meek, the meek. Let me read this to you. I'll get into this further. I'm going to use a lot of these scriptures. Shall inherit the earth. Now, now, either Jesus was wrong or our teachings are wrong. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. We'll find that over there in Psalms 37, 11. Maybe we'll go there. But let me go somewhere else here right now. In Galatians 4, and let me pick up about 29. I read this Bible when I got saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit began to show me how to read this word by inheritance. Because, see, Jesus left me a will. He left me a will and a testament. And I'm going to read you 29. I'm going to back up and read you a couple more. Now it says in Galatians 4 and 29, it says, But he, but as he who was born according to the flesh, then persecuted him. Oh, no, this is what I want. It says, persecuted him who was born according to spirit, even so it is now. Now, we, this is kind of powerful. So the guy that's born of the flesh is persecuting the guy that's born of the spirit. That's kind of, I've watched that my whole life because I was raised and all this. Now, it's 3 and 29 is what I want to do here for you. For if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. See, if you are Christ, then you're Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So every promise that God made to Abraham, he made to us. See, that's why we got Romans 4, all dealing with all about the seed of Abraham and the promises that God made to Abraham. Now, let me back up to 26. 
It's in Galatians 3 and 26, it says, for you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. So you're a son of God when you believe you are, through faith in Christ Jesus. See, I, I've talked about the manifested sons of God and what that truly means. Now it says, for as many of you as were baptized into Christ to put on Christ. See, this, now this word baptized doesn't mean dipped or died. It, it's a spiritual word and it deals with, with faith. It's a powerful thing and I'm not here to teach on that today, but we need to realize that. So as many baptized into Christ to put on Christ. Romans 13, 14 says, put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Put him on. Put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him who created him. See, be constantly renewed in the spirit of your mind. So as I begin to continue in this word, I begin to see what I am. Verse 28, it says, For there is neither Jew nor Greek, nor, there is neither uh, slave nor free, there is neither male nor female, for all are one in Christ Jesus. Praise God. I'm not here to expound on that, but all are one in Christ Jesus. If you're in Christ I mean, my wife and I travel a lot. We travel all over, and I can find people that are born of the Spirit of God, and, they, and, and I love that. I love it, and I'm not here to expound on that, but people that have been taught by God. We never have an argument. We never have any, any crossfires or sparks fly. We're just trying to deep calls out to deep. 29, for if you're Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Now, this is kind of powerful. Now, what kind of promises did God make to Abraham? Woo-hoo, let me... Let me birth this for you. Help me. Genesis 22 and 17. So I got to let my, my Holy Spirit concordance rise up in me here. Genesis 22 and 17. There's a lot of these. I'm just going to hit the, the clearest ones I can here. Because if God made this promise to Abraham, he made it to you. Right? This is the way I look at this. It says, blessing, I will bless. He says, blessing, I will bless you. So you know, it really says, in blessing, I will bless you. When I'm in a blessing... And I continue to be a blessing. God's going to bless you. See, that's where that's the way that works. It says, and multiply, multiplying, I will multiply your descendants as the stars of heaven and as the sand which is on the seashore, and your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies. Woohoo! And in your seed all nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. Now, wait a minute. Thy seed shall possess the gate of their enemies. Now, look at this. In, in 26 and 4, in 26 and 4, he says the same thing again in Isaac. He says, and I will make your descendants uh, multiply as the stars of heaven, and I will give your descendants all these lands. And in your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed, blessed because Abraham obeyed the voice and kept my charge, my commandments shall be with him. In 24 and 60, let me read you this one. I think it's 20, yeah, 24 and 60. And they blessed Rebekah and said to her, Our sister, may you become the mother of thousands of ten thousands, and may your descendants possess the gates of those who hate them. Man, I'll tell you what. <laughs> Hello, you should get excited right here. Thy seed shall possess the gate of their enemies. Man, I think sometimes people fail to understand really what you have and the power that you have working behind you. You are the royal seed of Abraham. If you'll rise up and allow that to be. I, I, I like something that God here said in Romans 9 and 17. This isn't really a, somewhere I was going to go, but it birthed in me here a minute ago. Now think about this. And it says, For the scripture says to Pharaoh, For this very purpose have I raised you up, that I might show my power in you that my name may be declared in all the earth. Now think about this. So this government, Moses, is a man-child company. I mean, he. I'm going back over here. Let me just use Revelation chapter 12, the man-child. Oh, well, I see some people go, oh, see, Brother Charles, that's just one man. No, it isn't because they, 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 they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word was their testimony. God's declaring victory today. So he's got this one world government, this one world system coming in. Why? Because God's going to take it down. The sons of God are rising up on the earth today. This corrupted world shall be delivered into the glorious liberty of the sons of God. Now think about this. So I see, now listen to verse 29. And as, and as Isaiah said before, unless the Lord of Sabbath had left us a seed, we would have, been, we would have become like Sodom and would have been made like Gomorrah. Come on, where's the people in the earth today? Where are the saints today? Where are the people that are, why did they take out soldier, warrior, battle, God's God and army, right? Walking through the land, deliverance in their souls, healing in their hands. 
You know, in this army, I have a part. And so there is a victory. I mean, there's victory. Thanks be to God always gives us the victory. So God's got this seed in the earth today that's going to do what God wants. Then Psalms, let me go back here to, yeah, Psalms 30, 37. In verse 11, let's just hit a few of these. Look at all these scriptures. There's hundreds of them. I got pages of them written down of what God says here. In 37, 11, it says, it says, but the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. Well, you know, look at verse 9. It says, For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait on the Lord shall inherit the earth. I mean, this is, this is, these are promises of God. They're all the way through the Bible. They're, they're everywhere. I don't know what happened. It says here in verse 2, it says, And they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Let me go back up to verse 1. Oh, do not fret because of evildoers, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity, for they shall be soon cut down like the grass and shall wither like the herb. Isn't that what John the Baptist said? Every fruit that bears not tree, every tree that bears not fruit shall be chopped down. I mean, what is God doing in this hour? He's separating the wheat from the tares. He's separating the make believers from the true believers, the people that believe this word over what God, what man is saying. They're not going to allow themselves to be deceived. Let no one deceive you by any means, Jesus said. Now, let's, let's back, look at verse 22 here. I don't, I'm going to hit, just jump around here. It says, Psalms 37, 22, For those blessed of him shall inherit the earth. You're blessed with that wonderful Abraham, right? It says, shall inherit it, but those cursed by him shall be cut off. Woo, man, that's pretty good. Now, let's just jump ahead to verse 28. And he says, 28, for the Lord loves justice he, and does not forsake his saints. They are preserved forever, preserved forever, to be absent from the body, present with the Lord. I didn't get that one in last week. But the descendants of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell in it forever. That's just what we, that's what was the promise to Abraham. Thy seed. I mean, you are the royal seed of Abraham. This is exciting stuff to me. I, it's hard for me to sit still. I'm a runner when I get to teach. Wait on the Lord and keep his ways. Verse 34. And he shall exalt, he shall exalt you to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, you shall see it. Come on, bless God. Mo As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. Wicked, wickedness never took over the world, everywhere, anywhere in the Bible. Why would we think today, oh, God's going to take us out of the earth? No, Noah pulled his boat up on the beach. He leaned up on us and, bless God, I was left behind, you know. He had nobody to argue with about who that beach belonged to because it belonged to him and his family. And it's going to be the same way. The wicked will be what? No more. They're going to be cut off if we'll just allow this to flow and go in the way that God wants it to go. I think this is wonderful. But this blesses me to have to share this with you. In Psalms 1. Let me go all the way up back to one. It's all the way through the Bible. There's more of these than I could read to you. I wrote, I like to say, pages of these down. It says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners. That's guys blessed. See, I'm not going to stand in those areas. Let the fools run with the fools, the wise run with the wise. I want to find people that love God more than I do, or people that want to love God. And that's who I'm going to run with. Nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates. Oh, come on. That's the place to meditate. It says, day and night, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf shall not wither. <clears throat> Whatsoever he does shall prosper. Whatsoever he does shall prosper. It says, the ungodly are not so, but they are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. They're going to fall. Nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Shall perish. I mean, that's a good word, isn't it? I mean, why, why are some of these things so hard for people to grab and, and understand? Because, see, God doesn't want this for his people. The, the enemy's going to manipulate things to you. And I am always tell you all the time, don't take my word for it. Let's look at Psalms 104. Jump around here a little bit. Psalms 104, we'll pick up, oh, about 35. 104, 35. It says here, uh, 
May sinners be consumed from the earth and the wicked be no more. May, consi- think, may sinners be consumed from the world and the wicked be no more. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Praise the Lord. Now, think about this. The sinners are going to be consumed from the world over and over again. It's all the way through Proverbs. It's all through Psalms. It's all through this Bible, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Isaiah 26 and 20. Let's read you this one. Isaiah 26 and 20. Laying this down for people. What saith it? The word. Now he says 26 and 20. Whoop. It says, come my people, enter your chambers and shut the door behind you. Hide yourself as it were for a little moment until the indignation is past. For behold, the Lord comes out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for the iniquity. The earth will be discl- will disclose her blood and will no more cover the slain. Now this is, so, you know, think about it. I think Colossians 3, 1 and 2 says, uh, let me read that to you. Talking about the hiding place of God. Jesus is my ark. Is he your ark? I mean, Colossians 1, 3, 1 and 2, this popped in here. Let me get it out here. I want to read it to you. I don't want to quote something to you. I want to read it to you because you think I got a different Bible or something. It says, if you then are raised with Christ, seek those things which are above. Where Christ is seated at the right hand of God, set your mind on things above, not things in the earth, for you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you will appear with him in glory. Woo-hoo, man, I mean, so your life is hid with Christ in God. Come on, I mean, we, we've got to get a revelation of this. Uh, Malachi 4.3 says, you shall tread upon the ashes of the wicked in that day. I mean, what are we, man, I mean, all these verses, all these prophecies, all the way through the whole Bible are there and they're powerful. In, in Proverbs, um, let, let's go to Proverbs 10 30. Let's do this. In Proverbs 10 and verse 30, we'll hit a few Proverbs here. I'll go back to Psalms. I just thought of a couple more in Psalms I want to use on you. Proverbs 10 and 30. We see... And I'll get there. 10 and 30. It says, the righteous will never be removed. The righteous will never be removed. See, a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwells what? Righteousness. The end doesn't mean the end. It actually means the dispensation change. And so we'll, we'll leave that. The righteous will never be removed, but the wicked will not inhabit the earth. Man, that's good stuff. The mouth of the righteous brings forth wisdom, but the perverse tongue will be cut off, cut out. The lips of the righteous know what is acceptable, but the mouth of the wicked will uh, what is perverse. Now, I'm working this for you the best way that I can because we need to get a revelation of this right here. Let's look at, uh, oh, help me, Jesus. Let's go, uh, there's so many ways to go. I'm trying to, I'm down to my last five, 10 minutes here. So I'm trying to make sure I get the best part in here that I can for you. I'll give you praise, praise, praise. Let's go to Isaiah 13, 9. Isaiah 13 and verse 9. We see here, Isaiah 13 and verse 9. It says, Behold, the day of the Lord comes, cruel with both wrath and fierce anger. Now, I've shared with you last time, Romans 5, 9, 1 Thessalonians 1 and 10 says, we are saved from the wrath through him. Right? The wrath is not for God's people. The great and awesome day of the Lord has come, right? And it says, behold, the day of the Lord comes cruel and both with wrath and fierce anger to lay the land desolate. He will destroy its sinners from it. He will destroy its sinners from it. I mean, that's his... I mean, that's as plain as it can ever get. Now, what do we do with all these when we get them time after time after time and we, we wander through all this and we, hello, look at Proverbs 2 and 22. I don't think I used this one on you yet. I do want to go back to Psalms here. And so there's something that happened and God has a purpose. Why does he always have man to do this? 2 and 22, let me do 21. Proverbs 2 and 21. But the, for the upright will dwell in the land and the blameless will remain in it. It says, but the wicked will be cut off from the earth and the unfaithful will be uprooted from it. That is, that is like good, that's powerful stuff. And so, you know, let, let, me, let me get back to this other thought I got here. Let me look at my time. Oh, I got plenty of time, I'm doing good. The, 
Uh, let me go to Psalms 149. In Psalms 149, we got a powerful statement here. Now, let me share some things with you here. God's always had people, God's always used man. You know, he looked for a man that would stand in the gap and take up the hedge and he could find none. Abraham was interceding for Sodom and Gomorrah, out came Lot and then fire and brimstone can. And I just shared that with you. Had God not left us a seed, we would have been like Sodom and Gomorrah. God's got the royal seed of Abraham in the earth today. I'm going to rehearse that just a little bit here because, see, God has something for you to do. Paul said something powerful in Romans 10, 10, 8. It says, what saith it? The word. See, that's where my old thing has been. What saith it? The word. What does this word say about what I'm hearing? But 10, 8, let me go on that. Romans 10, 8 says, but what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in your mouth. That is the word of faith which we preach, that if you shall confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the mouth confession, confession is made unto salvation. And with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. Now salvation, that heart, the mouth made unto salvation is, is protection, safety, and deliverance. But Jesus is our horn of salvation. Luke 170, let me go over here, 169, Luke 169. I'm going to get back to this psalm, but I got to lay a little foundation here for you because see, we've got a we've got a plan. See, we're supposed to take the sword, which is the spirit, with the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, Ephesians six and seventeen, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the spirit, right, which is the word of God. Now, God, if we have to use this word, Luke one and sixty nine, a prophetic word for Jesus, blessed is the Lord God of Israel, for He has visited and redeemed His people. He bought them. And he raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets who have been since the world began that we should be saved from our enemies. Saved from our enemies. I said last week, 1 John 4, 4 says, You are of God, little children, have already overcome them. The Amplified Bible says, Them agents of the Antichrist because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us to perform the mercies promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham, to, remember you are that royal seed of Abraham, to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear. And that's a good word, right? Serve him without fear. Now there's something that has happened. Now, what, how is this supposed to happen? I go back and I see Moses. He says, stand back and see the salvation of Jehovah. Now he's praying to God. He's having a prayer meeting. I've got some way long teaching on this. And he's having a prayer meeting. He already had the prayer meeting on the mountain. God said, you shall serve me from this mountain. Now, I'll leave that alone. But now he, Moses had the living oracles of God to what? Give unto us. It says there in Acts 7, 38, 7, 37, 38, and 39. Committed unto him were the living oracles of God to give unto Jesus to give unto us. Now Moses spoke and plagues broke out among them in Psalms 105 and 106. And so now I'm laying foundation for where I need to go here. The living oracles of God were committed unto you. First Peter 4.11 says, If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any one minister, let him minister with the ability which God giveth to God in all things may be glorified through Christ Jesus. No man can receive anything unless it's given to him from heaven, John 3 and 27. Now let me, let me go a little further with this. And so we see here, the living oracles are committed unto you, right? Now Moses said, stand back and see the salvation of Jehovah. They could see it. These Egyptians, which you see today, you'll see no more again forever. He was delivered from the hand of all them that hate him. That's the second usage of that word, soteria. Now, let me, let me move over here. Now I laid all that to get you over here because God's saying something here. He needs people to perform what he needs done. That's why he needed Moses. He could have snapped his fingers and just taken those people out of the earth. He didn't need, he didn't need Noah. He didn't need Jeremiah. I, I have the, thou is well seen, Jeremiah 1 and 12. I watch over my word to perform it. Just speak my word faithfully, right? Now, come on. I can't go through all that. Verse 5, 149 and 5, Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud on their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth. This is the saints now. It says, and a two-edged sword in their hand. What are they supposed to do with this two-edged sword? To execute, execute vengeance on the nations. To execute vengeance on the nations. And punishment on the peoples. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with feathers of iron. To execute on them the written judgment. This honor has all the saints. Praise the Lord. 
This honor has all the saints praise the Lord. We need to get a revelation of this. In Isaiah 41 and 10, he says this. So hard for me to teach in a half hour. He says, this is 41 and 10. It says, fear not. I am with you. Do not be dismayed. I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Behold, all those who were incensed against you shall be ashamed and disgraced. They shall be nothing. And those who strive with you shall perish. You shall seek them not and find them. Those who contended with you, those who war against you shall be as nothing as non-existent. For I, the Lord, will hold your right hand saying to you, fear not, I will help you. I mean, I could go on with this psalm, but you know, God has never leave you. He'll never forsake you. That's what he told Joshua. Be strong, be courageous. As I was with Moses, I will be with you. My Bible says in Ephesians 4, 5 and 4, 6 that he's in you all, with you all, and through you all. And Hebrews says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. The same promises that he made to Joshua, that he made to Caleb, that he made to Moses, that he made to Abraham, he has made to you. We are in a better covenant, a better, a better covenant, better sacrifice. Everything better, 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 all the way through the book of Hebrews. God doesn't want you to be lame to that. And I want you to be rise up and be the person you have. Hey, put the word of God in your mouth. The enemy comes along. Jesus said, you are to overcome even as I have overcome Revelation 3 and 21. And how did he overcome the enemy? It is written. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Perfect love cast out fear. Fear has torment. If you're in fear, just get into this word. Begin to pray it. Speak aloud. This is Brother Charles. Until next week, God bless you. You're more than a conqueror in every situation. Don't forget that. Bless, thanks be to God who always gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ.